Okay, it looks spinny to me, but mm -hmm. the machine, yeah. the foresight will tell us. Yeah, 3,000 spin, yeah. club was 109. Sp <laughs> 304, <laughs> Terry. Let's go. 165. Hey guys, thanks for watching. I'm here with JT Thomas. JT is one of the top young coaches in America, according to the Golf Digest, one of the 40 under 40. And really, uh, he travels the country really, but he goes up and down the East Coast like super often. Yep. And uh, between Florida, New York, New Jersey area. I contacted JT earlier this week because I've been having this problem, JT, that I want to ask you about. Yeah. And uh, I've had Dr. Kwan, who's like the top biomechanics person in golf, give me his opinion about it and then some other coaches too. And I don't know if I'm really totally buying it uh, because it is, it's really frustrating for me. So I'm just gonna get into my issue because I think this can relate to a lot of other people's things. Yeah. So JT, what happened was I was doing a lot of push-ups, right? Like I was trying to do that, you guys see on YouTube, like, you know, 100 push-ups a day for 30 days. I was doing something similar to that, but it wasn't like all at once. It was like throughout the day, every time I walked past my couch, I would do like that was my cue to do 10 push-ups. So like I was doing, you know, and, and somebody trolled me, they were like, it doesn't look like you've been doing too many push-ups. Like I was doing a lot. So uh, at the near the end of that, I went and I filmed a video with my good friend, Ed Lasseter, a coach in San Diego. And um, we were on these really sticky mats where we were doing this video and we were hitting a lot of punch shots and that mat kept grabbing me. And, that, and then the, that night, I didn't, I didn't think about it. We hit balls for literally like four hours. Wow. That night I went to put on a jacket, you know, like oh, you reach yeah. behind here. And I got this shooting pain from my bicep connector all the way up my arm that like would like make you fall on the ground. It hurt so bad. Since then, now, whenever I swing and hit driver a lot, I, my right arm hurts. Yep. Just the whole thing, then it, began, it feels like, I think I looked up on whatever, Google, Bicep tendonitis seems to be the thing that connects the most with it because not only does it hurt, your whole arm feels very weak. Like yeah. it feels like really weak. Dr. Kwan's opinion when I asked him about this, he says, I'm not moving my hips correctly. I'm lunging off the left side too hard. And because I want to stay behind the ball, I'm having to go like that. So then here I'm uh, hyperextended or something like that. Mm -hmm. What are your opinions on some of the reasons? Because I, I really like how you talk about how powerful the right arm can be. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So I, yeah. I would say that um, the reason you have that tendency is just because you drive the right elbow for too much too long, especially if you are doing those punch shots. If you're hitting the golf ball in external rotation, that is absolutely the worst thing that you can do because we are supposed to... Like you're in a compromised yes, position here? because okay. we're supposed to release energy in internal rotation. So that's why when we hit, Whoa. when we hit, like when a boxer punches, they punch like this. You don't punch like that, right? So right. you don't go like this, it would hurt really bad. Yeah. Um, so by the time that we swing, we actually are in external near the top, but then by the time we get to the ball, we need to be internal so that when we're hitting the ball, the, re the energy is releasing like bam, like yeah. that. So again, that's in a much safer position position if this starts yeah, getting show me too, face on that way because yeah. that's a really good point yeah so if we get essentially you know for Brandon I think the biggest thing is that he gets this right arm hitting the ball in external rotation again that's kind of like the worst thing that you could do for your for your elbow um, again hitting something on those sticky mats hitting punch shots trying to get the handle more forward and doing it by just your right arm and your right elbow like we want to put force on the shaft way before then okay. so if I didn't put enough force in that point I'm not gonna have it at impact so I'm gonna have to keep driving my elbow to get that force on the club and that's well, the, worst the, thing that well the other thing is too that um, as you know like on my channel like I've been trying so desperately like I used to be this yeah, guy yeah. here yeah for sure. so I've been trying so desperately to look more like Cameron Champ yeah, or, yeah, yeah, yeah. or something like that you know where where this line I really want pointy past the ball a little bit yeah I've noticed in your swing you have the line point and pass the ball, but you're not afraid to be a little bit more like this Definitely rather not. than for like, sure. Oh, okay. okay. And again, that's because I think that's the safest way to release energy. Okay. Um, I think the guys that uh, have more shaft lean, they're actually doing the same thing, even though their release looks later. Um, they're not dragging that handle. They just created way more force earlier in the swing. Well, one thing I want to ask you about is because it's not really just to get the terms right. Like, so Cameron Champ might even have the shaft like up and down. He's just so this way. Exactly. The shaft is not leaning, but this is really, but Correct. you're saying even in this position yes. can be dangerous. Well, no, that's much better. See, you're okay. much more IR there in that right, in that right oh, elbow. 
so, so that's a really so big if deal, you're yeah. if you're getting shaft lean but you're doing yes, this way exactly. it's different than this yes, correct i got all right correct. huge so that's a really big deal all right so like uh fly on the wall style here what would you like to see me do first or um i would say let's do a warm-up a little yeah. bit with your arm okay. lines for yeah. your uh for your body so this is really simple it's just kind of 10 reps both sides you're going to put your arms out like this, your mm -hmm. palms facing the ground. Mm -hmm. And then what you're gonna do is you're going to rotate your arms this way. So mm -hmm. the opposite direction, one goes towards the sky. One palm up. Yep, exactly, one palm down. And then you're gonna look the way that your palm is up. So you're gonna look this way, look this way, look this way, look this way. You're gonna do this probably 10 reps or so, like that. Cool, both sides. That really kind of, again, starts to activate all this stuff in your neck, um, both arm lines. It really opens up your scaps, everything there, good. And then uh, kind of the, the next big one that I would do that's pretty important is trying to, again, keep your spine in some flexion, raise your arms really as high as you can here, then take a deep breath, breathe out, raise them again as high as you can, trying to keep your spine in flexion, take one more deep breath, raise them up, raise them up, raise them up, good, and then hold it there for about five seconds, trying to relax, keep your spine in flexion, and then come down, yeah. Let's do that one more time. That's that was, I like that because yeah, I think I can't. It's not up and down. It's like each breath makes it go a little further than you thought you could. Exactly. I got Correct. it. Yeah. Okay. 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 So here, yep, good. Go as high as you can go and kind of relax. Keep your spine in flexion. Up again. Spine stays in flexion, and then one more as high as you can go. Spine in flexion. When you might even feel your feet change a little bit. Like dang, I got to use the ground to help me uh, get my arms up. Good. Yep. So really good there. So now you should have really open neck muscles really yeah. open shoulder lines great um, so now you're, you're good to go ready to hit some bombs yep absolutely. okay great yeah okay all right so i'm just going to do what i would do like on the yeah. course perfect just trying not to work on anything you said i'm yep. just, just straight just up trying to hit him yep as if i could change that fast anyway <laughs> this is going to be i've been feeling more comfortable with this fade here Nice. Okay, it looks spinny to me, but mm -hmm, the machine, uh, the foresight will tell us. Yeah, 3,000 spin, yep. club was 109. Smash was good at 146 for a foresight is very high. Yep. Um, ball speed is what I want to see, 160. Yep. So uh, my fastest of my life was with Drew Cooper when I did 172, I think. Yeah, that felt, uh, that felt whatever. That's super normal for like a on-course drive for me as far as like, I know I can shape, shape it this way to that way. It's kind of like the fairway finder thing. Yep. So should I hit another one? Yeah, say one more. Okay. Oh, it's real similar. Yep. Same like safety. Same the 109 spin a little bit again. Uh, 147 smash. The, yep. sm the smash was high. 160 again. Yep. Carried 277. Spin was uh, lower. Spin was, was good at 2100. So I would say a big thing for you is that you do not protract your lead arm enough. Um, and so, so, pro, so uh, protract is, your lead arm, your lead arm oh, is reaching, that way. doesn't reach enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah. Mm -hmm. So you retract it a lot. And so when you retract it, you actually can't use the ground. This is a big reason why um, you struggle with like sliding, right? Uh -huh. um, and so in order for me to push and you-, you Sliding, can, yes. no, okay. Part of the reason you do that is because you have no protraction. So in order to protract and have any type of bend, I got to push into the ground pretty hard. Um, that's how I create leverage for me to push my arm out. Yeah. Um, if I don't do that, you don't have any leverage into this foot and you can't spike that any of that pressure. Okay. So yeah, um, yeah really big deal for you is, is reaching out this lead arm and you'll feel too like, man, in order for me to do that, I got to push into the ground. It might even feel your right leg. I'm not sure which, which foot it'll feel like to you because it's different for different people. But in order for you to really reach this lead arm and get this turn, you're like, oh man, I feel it right now a lot in my right foot, a ton for me to be able to do that. So you get in there, just hold it with your lead hand there. Yeah, yep, that's lead it. hand only. Yep, lead hand only, just, yeah, there you go, yep. And so do that again for me, same thing. Awesome, yep, way better, good. One more time. Good, there you go. Now, what I want you to do is I want you to reach it a little bit uh, more like at a 45, so like back that way behind you. That's better. Yeah, much better. You got to turn yeah. more than that. And the other thing I want you to do is I want you to keep, you're losing that right foot pressure on the ground. So mm -hmm. that right toe, right ball of your foot's coming off the ground. I want you to keep that pressure into the ground. Don't let it get into your heel too much. Yeah, that's better. Good. Do that again. Just keep like the, the points of your foot. Yeah, keep, now you can give it, relax, relax. Yeah, and then reach that, reach it out here. There you go. Mm -hmm. That's better. Good. Start over. 
Yeah, nice. There we go. So much better. You feel it kind of under your right foot for some pressure? Where are you, are you feeling any pressure there? I'm feeling it loading into my groin. You're perfect. Like when I'm screwing my hip into my femur. Yeah, much better. Great. Yeah, that's awesome. And then, and then my shoe, like I feel my, my foot in my shoes. Yeah, kind of gripping out. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, good. And so what this protraction, again, allows you to do is then to start to use your right arm way better. So for you, again, I don't think you load that right arm uh, very much. So having that now, do that again, that same feel with the lead arm. Protract it, yeah. Now take your right arm, rotate it to the right. So you're gonna you're gonna grab the club up there. So go ahead and grab it here, yeah, good. And then take this right arm, externally rotate it. Yeah, relax it, yeah, external. So twist it to the right. Yeah, like that, good. And then grab it, good. And then you can fold this thing and then feel like that's a throw back there. So pull that right arm behind you, fold your right arm, pull it behind you. There you go, good, relax a little bit more. Yeah, good. And then get this thing, relax this, relax this, relax this, there you go and then pull that thing back if you can. And if you can't pull it back, that means your arm is too low. Okay. So you need to get so, it above uh, your rib cage. What's that, it's called scapular? Scap, 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 scap this, yeah. So the scaps is like, the left one is pulling away from the spine, and the and, right one is crunching in towards it? Yes, exactly. And gotcha. so, and you gotta get it high enough too. So if your lead arm's too low, there you go. So you can see how that little move you did where your lead arm kind of went right above your, your rib cage? That's what you want. So lead shoulder is gonna be more internal, so lead shoulder is going to be more internal. That allows you to get it higher. See how that's higher now above your ribs? Yeah. Yep, great. And then bend this elbow a ton. Yeah, there you go. That's better. There you go. So much better. Good. Let's do that again. So stretching it. There you go. Good. And then don't be bashful about essentially what's going to happen is your, lead, your left arm is going to pull your right arm up against your chest. So the really good feel that I like for that is holding that club almost like a, a little bit like a hockey stick. So having your hands separate. Uh -huh. Good. And then reach that left arm out. Good. And then you're going to use this right hand, pull your right arm back as far as you can, and that's going to pull your left arm even more. Yeah, that's, oh, there okay. you go. Yeah, that's yeah. so good. That's the, that's the load. There we go. Nice. So cool. much better. So I think those are kind of the keys for you is to get that lead arm to get higher. <laughs> Do not mind at all the arms twisting to the right. Again, the lead shoulder needs to go internal. That okay. helps with protraction. Uh -huh. Right shoulder needs to go external. That helps with retraction. Okay. So that's kind of the feels that we want here. Should I hit one? Yeah, let's hit one. All right. So I, I can't uh, express enough how far that right elbow is probably gonna feel behind you in comparison to what it typically is. Like freaking throw that thing, let, let it stretch you out. Okay. So lead arm goes back. Ooh. Yeah, nice. Reach the left. Reach the left and pull reach. back the right hard. Yeah, nice. Oof. Awesome. Let's do that again. Same thing. This way. Yeah. Yeah, and let that that right one's gonna feel like it goes back forever. Okay. Forever. Don't be bashful after you reach the left one. Yeah. Sweet. Right. So what you'll start to realize is, and this is great, guys. So um, it, this shows me how much of you're under the plane most of the time. Yeah. So you're you having you're having a really nice force on the club now, okay. meaning the the handle's getting way more forward. Uh -huh. You're getting more force on the club, but you're tilting back so much because you're so used to having essentially the force that you put on the club is never forward enough. Meaning like this grip never moves like this. Oh, right. Okay. Um, and so that is what, again, gets the handle forward, but also makes the swing direction go to the right. So finally, your brain will understand, oh, I'm putting a force this way, I can finally go, my left pelvis can get lower, and then I can open, and I'll still hit the ball straight, versus if I go like this with my new arm lines, you're gonna hit hooks all day, because okay. you're putting a force on the club this way, finally, okay. versus you put a force on the club this way, and then you have to back up to hit it. So let's hit some more. You should kind of draw them or hook them if you do if okay. you keep doing this this way. So go like this, right? Yep. Uh -huh. And try to hit a draw. Yeah, yeah. No, I would just hit it normal. I wouldn't even try to hit a draw. I actually okay. try to hit a fade okay. if you really want to do it correct. All right. But for now, just keep loading those arm lines as well as you can, and then if you keep drawing them or overdrawing them, that's completely fine. <clears throat> nice. Two ninety-five carry there. Look how much better spin that was. So that means you yeah, have 1500 spin. Yeah. Um, way better. Again, you're, so you're starting to get a force on the club. Okay. Um, and transition finally. I mean, I th uh, golf wise, I think the main thing that brings me to a lot of problems is that I hate to hit pools. Yep. 
So then I do a lot of stuff to Correct. get it to right and, field. And that's because you don't have any force on the shaft, right? So your club is always kicking at the bottom. It's always kicking. So in order for it to, in order for you to play good golf, you have to be tilting back to hit the ball because your club is kicking across, guys, from this view. So Brandon's club is always kicking this way. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So in order for him to play good golf, if the club is kicking across the plane this way, I better be freaking back here and hitting. Otherwise, I'm going to hit poles all freaking day. Yeah, you can yeah. never get here. I mean, you would hit it way, even more, way left. Yeah. So, again, now that you, if you load these arm lines, right, you can get way like this. Again, how we see like Cam Champ, like, like that, or, you know, Gordon Sargent, Memu Lee. You can't do that if your force on the club is going like that. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Your force on the club has to be like this for you to be that far ahead nice. of the ball and build up that, the, all the pressure, you know, the, the left pelvic tilt, all those things. Mm. So if you keep loading these arm lines right and you keep tilting back, you should hook them. So essentially. this way yeah, and then that way. Yeah, I would say just try and fade it. Try to really fade it. Get your left hip into that as much as you can. Yeah, exactly. And pull that, again, left arm reaching, right arm really back, and then just try to fade it. Yeah, sweet. Let's do that again, same thing. And still drew it, which again just tells you how under the plane you still are, which again okay. is good. I'm happy. That means you're doing the arm line right. So this way, right? <laughs> yep, exactly. Really, so do not be bashful and pull, pull that right arm more. That, that's better. That's better. That's better. Okay. Pull that arm line as much as you can. Nice. Oh, yes, that that's what you should hit, man. Oh, okay. That is what I want to see. So All essentially right. what we're trying to... Pull out a couple more balls. Yeah, so again, I love to see 12. that. What that means is that you have a new pattern. We completely change your pattern. You are not getting good results by doing your same downswing pivot, right? You're right. getting shitty results. So now, again, let's do one more. If you hook it, I don't care. Um, and then we'll kind of work on the downswing a little bit to get you hit okay. straighter. Yeah. yeah, so I want to get hit this spot right here, right? Yes, that's all we're trying to do. Make sure we really get that right arm pulling Let me see if I can do a dry swing. Yep. Good, yep. Even a little bit more, I'd say, with that right arm. That's better. Really good. Really good. Love that. That's the hook you want. That's the hook. That's the one I yeah. want to see, guys. Right. So now what we've finally done is we're getting a really nice force on the shaft. We're getting the handle forward, or we're getting the force forward. We're getting the path into out. So now your brain is incentivized to rotate, right? Okay. Now you're finally incentivized to rotate. If you rotated more open before, yeah, because be if, if the shaft comes this way, then you don't want to rotate. You want to do that. Exactly. If the shaft's here, then you can. Exactly. Okay, I got you. So what we're going to try and do is just from a basic perspective, nothing fancy. I want you to feel like you're going to slice the crap out of the ball. Okay. So you're trying to swing way across this thing. So fully loaded at the top here, and then swing across. Yeah, and just slice feel, it. Feel like you're going to slice it. Yeah. Right. Feel like you're going to slice it. That I think you can do. Just watch the top. Yep. Almost know that right shoulder's too uh, internal. Oh, okay. Yeah, exactly. So if you let that right arm rotate a little bit, you can pull your right arm farther back. Yeah, there you go. Exactly. Punch this way and. Yep. That was that's really good there. Yeah, that's nice. And then slice it. And slice it. <clears throat> nice. Well, that was a four yard slice <laughs> that was a bomb that was nice. a bomb that was so good yeah 164 one uh, 291 carry there yep and it was a fade but i like a i don't have the numbers fade. yet yeah only a 2200 fade yeah. 2200 spin fade exactly <clears throat> that felt good that was sick rather than here like i feel like there's some like i always say like red lights in my swing because i'm doing certain things that i have to but that like like yeah that back when i was really bad at golf I used to swing really fast, but I sliced the crap out of you. <laughs> yeah. know what I mean? yeah, for sure. But like, there, it's an athletic feeling to to be able to, yeah, to be so, able to really open and not, yeah, not, yeah, yeah. So feeling a big slice, yeah. Keep loading those arm lines, really nice. <clears throat> nice, nice. That went really straight, really straight again. 285 carry. Yep, 285 carry. Spin really good, I think, again. Find some better balls in here. There we go. Yeah. 
2388. Love that. 164 ball. That was my fastest ball. Mm -hmm. And again, what's so cool is uh, everybody loves like using the ground to help people increase their speed. But in reality, man, we're not hitting the ball with the ground. The, the, our arms are holding the club, right? Sure. <laughs> so we need to learn how to load the arms so that we get some of that energy output. Yeah, there's a lot of workers in the chain between the ground and the club that could be like on their lunch break, you know, that might not even make it. You know? Yeah, might not even make it, yeah. So punching, so I'm punching like there's this wall this way. Yeah. Right, and then I'm reaching back as if I'm throwing as far as you can, yeah. Going that way. Exactly, yeah. And then slicing. And then slicing. <laughs> yep. And all the slicing feeling is doing is keeping the shaft here rather than... Exactly, because okay. you're, you're finally getting the, sh the... You're actually putting a force on the shaft under the plane, so you need to get it back on top. Okay, here we go. Yeah. Punch and reach, and then slicing. Sick. Look at that though, 168, 168. baby. 168. Let's go. 1800 spin. Yep. So good. The ball Love slightly that. drew, and that like th that does raise the smash, you know. Whenever. Yeah. It's like. A 113 10. club. Look at that. Yep. So here. Oh, that was 297 carry. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Good. Yeah. That was, that was right. All right. So I I need actually a little still a little bit more slice feel. Yes. One sixty-eight again, two ninety. Uh, One sixty-eight's a new high. One fourteen. <laughs> That's good. All right. I'm not on the downswing. I'm getting dumped under somehow a yes. little bit still. And just, and just keep two ninety carry. It's your brain trying to figure it out. Just keep, and you need to tell it that I'm finally gonna swing under plane, so I don't have to tilt back anymore. Let's get you a little better ball in, in there. Oh, I don't have to do this anymore. No, you, I can stay on the ball. You can stay. That's that's the slice feel. You can freaking slice the crap out of it. That's oh, okay. Feel, I can yeah, stay right? on top of the you ball rather than yeah. dumping it. Okay. Nice. There's a little yeah. baby cut. That was really straight. Yeah, 165. 165. Yeah, it was low. That was a bad ball, I think. Yeah, super bad ball. Yeah. Um, because 165 ball and it. Not only carry anywhere. 266 exactly, anymore. Exactly. Yep. Got some more of these. Okay, so out. for homework, in case the in case the video dies out. Yep. My homework. I mean, what I'm liking is just two things. Is like I'm I'm just doing this, like yep. punching the wall. Actually, I have to punch a wall and a 45 here. Yep. That way, and then taking this like three fingers. Yeah. Exactly. Yep. Between that and then just staying on plane. Yeah. So you can, like I said, you can feel like you're slicing. You can swing way across it again because you're finally getting a force that's going. Yeah. That way. Yeah. We were going to do something today with the launch deck, which I don't have, mm, but which would really help with this. So I'm going to like improvise yeah, yeah, something exactly. here. Yep. So I don't want to get no. that way towards the ball. I want to stay on top of yes, it. Correct. That. How do you like that? I like that a lot. Okay. So like most golfers, they would want to swing more towards first base, but I got to feel more towards third base. Correct. Okay. So we're going this JT and then reaching behind me. Yep. You got it. Oh, it was really good. 300 this carry, helped. baby. We did it. Yeah, 300 carry. 167, I think. Would have carried more. The spin was a little a little high on the because maybe the ball. Mm -hmm. But 167 ball, that's really good. Yep. Oh, spin was okay. 2200. Uh, 2, 2, yeah. Let's get you another good one here. Let's do it. Let me give me a, give me a, the sickest reach with that right arm that you can get. Okay, let me see if I can do it. Uh, dry swing here, sickest reach with the right arm would be this way, yes. right? Uh huh. You like this? Yes, love that. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. do that again, one more time. Stay there and just take a breath for me, relax, <sighs> and then pull that right arm again. Give it, a, give it a pull. There you go. Really give that thing a pull. The harder you pull, the more you're gonna need to stay on top of it. So, okay. pull and then. Slice fade it. Yep. <laughs> 304, 304 carry. Let's go. 165. 115. 115. Okay, great. That was awesome, guys. Uh, thanks, JT. Of course. Really appreciate really good. it. Yeah, that was great. You guys Instagram. can find more about JT on Instagram. That's right. So, everybody who's watching this, it means very little to you 
to go over and follow JT on Instagram, but it means a world to him. Yeah, yeah. And same thing with the subscribe button here on, on YouTube. We're gonna be doing some exclusive stuff with JT with the little join button below this video. Uh, be Better Golf Now has got this thing called the Be Better Golf Members Club. We're gonna be going to, into in depth detail on some of this stuff and have some extra content, early content and other stuff like that here on Be Better Golf. Thanks for watching, bye.